Hey guys, welcome back to part two on the DT360 project here. We're just going to be putting them back together at this point. Uh, if you watch part one, you got to see all of the cosmetic side get done, the painting and the decal work on the fuel tank and the oil tank. So that's all done. And next is just going to be me piecing it together, basically uh, getting it back to a uh, roller status first. I think I'm going to put the swing arm and the front end on. And then uh, once I get that rear wheel or rear tire done on it uh, i'll be able to throw the wheels back on make a roller out of it and then i'll throw the motor in and hook all that up so um, i'm going to get started with the swing arm and the rear end first i think and then move my way over to the front end so let's get started So I'm going to start off with some of the smaller bits that are going to be hard to get to once I get the swing arm on and the motor and all that stuff. So I'm going to get the uh, brake pivot here. I'm going to grease that up, throw that right in this spot. And then I'm going to get the uh, rear brake uh, bar that connects to the rear drum uh, right in here. And get that, all that stuff out of the way before I move the uh, swing arm into place. Get some grease on here real quick. swing arm going in next here. I'm going to try not to scratch the paint, but I think it's going to be impossible on the inside of that. It's a tight fit. So I've got the swing arm in. It's a pretty tight fit, so I'm going to try to, try to fit the uh, swing arm pivot bolt through. Okay, we got the swing arm pivot bolt in and she's on and ready to go. Probably gonna turn my attention up front and uh, put the steering head in with the bearings and all that good stuff. Here's some of the smaller bits I got for the bike, including the ball bearings needed for the steering head and the race and a couple spacers there too. So it uh, looks like a master link clip in there too, which is for the chain, of course. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff cleaned up and uh, figure out where those ball bearings go up top. I think the bigger ones are up top and the smaller on the bottom, but I could be wrong. So I'm gonna take a peek at that and see which way they gotta go. Got the ball bearings all cleaned up. Got the races cleaned up. So it is in fact the bigger ones that go on the bottom race and uh, the smaller ones up top. So I'm gonna start putting some grease along here and dropping each bearing in place and uh, getting ready to put it on the frame. Got the bottom race all greased up and the ball bearings in place. So now I'm going to throw this up underneath the frame. I got the frame uh, greased up too here. So I'm ready to put this in place, I think. Let me get the nut ready so I don't drop anything. So I'm going to grease up the top race before I put the bottom part of the steering head in and uh, get the smaller ball bearings in place. The outer part of the race greased up and I'm just going to set it down right on top of these. All right, now I'm ready for the bottom part of the steering head. All right, as I mentioned, I got the bottom part of this race greased up too. 
and my lower ball bearings in place. So now I'm just gonna slowly try not to pop that off of there. Okay, oh, there that goes. Put that back into place. I'll put this over top of that, hold it down. And just do this kind of finger tight for now, just to hold everything in place. Okay, we're good to go there. Turning my attention out back again here, I'm going to put the shocks on. So I got them ready to go. I got the uh, headlight holders lined up, ready to go on. Hopefully this all slips into place fairly easily. This is always a tricky part. And next up, I might as well put the handlebars on. I got the uh, ignition switch and everything hooked up to it still here. I'm just going to get this in place. Let's just snug everything up. Move the gauge cluster into place here. You can already tell some of these bulbs are bad, so I'll get those replaced. But we'll worry about the gauges later on. Getting my headlight bucket put in place and the wires routed through the opening here. And I can button up the uh, headlight. So I finally ended up just putting the uh, rear tire on. Uh, luckily I didn't pinch a tube, I'm usually Pretty bad at doing that. I end up pinching a tube at least once. Uh, so I guess I'm getting better because this one went off first try and it's not leaking, so that's a good thing. But anyways, I'm going to uh, give us a quick sand on the drum here, or on the uh, the hub, I should say, uh, and then uh, do the same for the front and also clean up the uh, rear pads a little bit and re-grease some of these pivot points up. So there's still some meat left on those pads. So... Uh, Get ready to make this thing a roller. All right, we got the rear wheel on. Figured there was no need to record myself bolting it to the frame, but we got the, the back wheel on, so I'm gonna do the front and then we'll have a roller. I think before I put the front wheel on, I'm gonna throw this fender on just cause it'll be easier to get to uh, without the wheel in the way. And we got a front wheel on now too. Even got front brakes. All right, I think it's time to try to put the motor back in. I got the front motor mount bracket in. I, I'm gonna try putting it in with, with that in place. I might have to move this out of the way. I can't remember how I did it on the other one, but uh, I'm gonna try to shoehorn it in now. Let's give this a try. That wasn't too bad at all. I'm already pretty close with the uh, bolt hole alignments here. I just gotta lift up on the back end a little bit. I'll probably put a piece of wood under there and pry up. 
and get those started. There's only four bolts that hold it in, so that's not very complex at all. All right, I'm gonna start with the upper rear mount, uh, mount bolt here, and I'm just gonna grease it up a little bit. There we go. Keep those snug until I get the rest of them in. So just starting that one should have gotten the bottom one pretty close, which it looks like it is. All right, working my way over to the front mounting bolts. Just gonna lift up all the motors just a hair. Get this lined up here. All right, we got the motor mounted. All four bolts are tightened down. All of the bracket bolts are tightened down. If you saw, I left the um, carburetor on, hooked up to the throttle cable, and all the way up to the uh, throttle assembly, just to make things a little easier. Um, once I put it on, I just kind of rerouted all these cables and wires and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna keep the uh, oil tank line out of the way for now. I think next I'm gonna be putting that air box on. And, uh, Get rid of this, and we're ready to put that air box back in. And I'm going to follow that up with the rear mud guard. And next up, I'm ready for the uh, tool tray and the air box opening cover here. All right, next up, I'm ready for the oil tank to go back in. Now the parts pal's dwindling. I just got a couple more parts to put on. We'll do the rear fender next. Here's a closer look at the uh, kickstand tab that my buddy welded on here, fabricated this whole thing. This right here is where the hole was, because I guess the original one must have just uh, ripped off of there. So when I purchased the bike, there was just a big hole, no tab. So he pretty much um, cut it out nice and even and um, filled it in with a patch and then welded this tab over top of it. It works pretty good. I just have to figure out where I'm going to put the uh, spring uh, knob on here. So my plan is to just drill that out and uh, tap it and use like a, some kind of nut or a screw or something on there with a, with a big end so that the screw or the, uh, the spring can slip over it because I got the, the tab here and then probably up in this area somewhere I'm thinking. But holds the bike up. I kind of had to bend this out a little bit. You can see some of the paint chipped off, but that's not a big deal. This will be worn away there anyway. And uh, works good with the uh, placement of the kickstand too. It's not too not too far out. And put it down, and it holds the bike up. So I think that worked out pretty well. So now that I got the bike off the jack, I could put the uh, little odds and ends on, like the foot pegs and the skid plate. But first, I got to put on the uh, brake pedal.
Moving over to the left side, just putting this peg back on. Good to go. Before I put the skid plate on, I think I have this cable routed wrong. I believe it's supposed to go on the inside of this. Uh, hence the uh, the cover here, the spring cover that goes over it to protect it from the, uh, the header. I'm pretty sure this goes on the inside of this. I'm going to take this down from the top and uh, reroute it. So I think that looks a little bit better routed on the inside. That way the skid plate's protecting that down here. And everything's routed nice and neat up top. Right out through here onto the lever. The skid plate on next. New bulbs came in the mail. I'm gonna throw these on these sockets here and get the gauges in place. That one still looks good. I'll leave that one on there. And next up, the gauges. Got these cleaned up pretty well. I think they turned out pretty nice. Just a little dirt on the edge there, but I'll get that once it's once it's on. I think I should put a little lube down these cables while I have this open. Yeah, got the Speedo and Tack fastened down, cleaned up. Looking pretty good. And yeah, next up, I'm going to try to fit this freshly painted muffler on. I'm going to do this without scratching too much. Here we got the muffler all lined up. Next up is the tailpipe. All right, next up, I'm ready to move over to the wiring harness. I just got to get all the routing correct here. I'm going to take a peek at the service manual and kind of see how they suggest this to be routed. So I think it's supposed to start on this side, work its way down the tube, and then switch over to this side underneath this part of the frame through this uh, clamp here. And then it's supposed to ride behind the oil tank. So I unbolted that for a second. It's supposed to ride up under here. And I'll figure out where that's all going to connect in the back again once I look at the manual. All right, I got everything fitted up here with the uh, wiring harness. Got the uh, just the battery, just a test fit. I still got to put uh, the acid and charge it up in there. But this is just in place to make sure I got the cables in the right spot, which it looks like I do. I got a couple leftovers here for the turn signals. And down here is a little bit tight. I was able to figure out these and kind of tuck them up in there nice. Got the brake switch tucked up behind the uh, frame tab here. Got uh, got this routed up according to the manual under this clamp, over this bar, and then down under here. This is going to be for the coil. I still got to uh, 
sand off the paint to get to uh, bare metal here when I hook up the coil. We've got the uh, flasher relay hooked up, the regulator. Uh, I got all the dielectric grease and all the fittings here. And I got the uh, headlight bucket ready to hook all this up. I'm just gonna go over each connection here with uh, some sandpaper and dielectric grease when I put them together. And on this side, everything's nice and neat. Routed the correct way, I think. So uh, yeah, let's get some sandpaper on these contact points, puts the coil back on. Then I'll hook up the uh, rest of the wiring harness in the bucket, put the headlight on, charge up the battery, and I think we are one step closer to uh, getting this thing fired up again. Okay, we got good bare metal there to ensure good ground for the coil. So I'm going to hook that up next. It's all buttoned up. I just got to get a zip tie or something to hold this down. Just kind of keep that together. But uh, other than that, I think we're ready to move on. I think we're ready for the seat next. I just got the fuel petcock on the tank and I'm ready to put it on the bike here finally. Okay, I got the wiring all buttoned up under the uh, headlight bucket here, and really all that's left is to put the headlight on. I still got to do the front signals um, and the rear, and the front would plug in up here, but uh, I'm just going to leave those off for now because uh, I got to find the uh, clamps that go on the handlebars for those yet. So I'm just going to put the headlight back on, get this thing to a point where I can run it. Getting ahead of myself a little bit, I almost forgot the chain. All right, next up, I'm gonna fill this battery up with some acid and get it on the charger. Don't necessarily need it to run the bike, but I'm going to have it ready to go when I'm uh, ready to take it for a ride. So let's get this opened up and filled up. tap get the bubbles out of it all right so that's been sitting for a little while i let the bubbles work out and i kind of topped it off as the level went down so i'm going to let this sit a little longer and get it on the charger throw it on the bike all right guys i think we're at that point where i can throw some gas in it and uh, get it fired up uh, this thing hasn't run since uh october i think is when i tore it apart so 
Um, I did check for spark when I put it all back together, so we got spark, so we're going to be good to go. The carburetor's been cleaned, uh, so it's just a matter of putting fuel in it, getting it, getting it started up, and outside. All right, here we go. First start after putting this thing back together. It's been apart since October. Let's see what happens. Stand yet. Except for leaks, I don't see any. Things started off so easy. So good. signals or anything yet but I'll get there torquey real torquey mess with the jetting a little bit it's kind of bubbling a little bit there whenever I was heading up that hill but uh, I'm gonna open it up on this road see what happens 
Not really a fast revving bike. I think I don't, I don't know if the 360s were known for that. Yeah, I'm gonna try up here too. pretty good. Just got to get that jetting sorted, I think. It's kind of running a little rich, it seems. Mid-range and up. I might have to check that uh, O-ring that's in the, the bottom of the needle set, uh, the needle jet set. Um, on my 250, that ended up being deteriorated to the point where it was just uh, running really rich. So it might be it might be starting to go with this one. This one's not too bad, but I can tell it's running rich mid-range and up. But other than that, man, this thing... Uh, this thing runs great. It's got like, a lot of torque to it. It's not a, not a fast revving bike, but I think that's just the uh, characteristics of the 360. Uh, it's not like my 250 that kind of revs out a little quicker, but I don't know. That might might be the jetting too. I don't know. Who knows? But she idles nice. Starts up real easy. So I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this build, it was fun. Definitely a long process, but uh, well worth it at the end, I think.
Yeah, I think I gotta check the uh, check that O-ring that's on that on the bottom of the needle jet uh, that sits in the bowl of the carburetor. That ended up being an issue on my 250, um, where it wouldn't rev past halfway. I'm gonna try looking at that on this uh, just to see if that's maybe starting to go because it's not quite as bad as the 250, but it doesn't really want to rev out clean in the upper revs. So I'm gonna take a look at that, but overall, pretty happy with how this thing ran. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's going to wrap up this video. Um, I'm going to get that jetting sorted out. I'm going to tear the carburetor apart, take it for another ride, and be sure to update you guys on how that worked. Uh, just because it, it ran great up until about half throttle, and whenever I go full throttle, it seemed to go worse. And like I was mentioning before, it, this did happen on my uh, DT250B um, just, just like last week. And ended up replacing that little uh, O-ring at the bottom of the uh, needle needle jet that sits down in the bottom of the carburetor and uh I was surprised at how, how much that made a big difference because the one that was in there on my 250 was kind of worn out wasn't completely dead yet but i'm thinking this one might be the same way because it kind of is behaving the same way so like i said i'll be sure to update you guys i'll go for another ride and maybe record that too and and so you can see how that goes hopefully it fixes it and like I said, too, I also have uh, turn signals I got to put on here. I got to source some rear ones, but I do have front ones I still got to hook up. Uh, but I do have to find rear turn signals. So um, thanks again. And if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Leave me some likes, comments. It all goes a long way in helping the channel grow, guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.